here are the five best ways to set up cameras for your hybrid meeting so that your online participants can see your in-room participants. The cheapest option is to use the built-in camera in your laptop. The benefits are that you already have it and you know how to use it. Now it's not going to be the most flexible solution, but you can still do a lot with the built-in camera. In your hybrid meeting, you can place the laptop on a table in the meeting room. But it's even better if you have a podium so that you can elevate the laptop and the camera a little bit above the table. Ideally, you want to have the camera at eye level or as close as possible. One benefit of using the laptop camera is that you will still have access to the laptop during the meeting and you can see what's happening on the screen. The next solution is to use an external USB webcam. In this setup, I have mounted my Poly Studio P5 on top of this small rig desk stand. You can also mount the webcam on a real camera tripod or on a mini tripod or even on a light stand because it's not very heavy. All the equipment I'm talking about is linked in the description below the video. And there you can also pick up my free hybrid meeting checklist. One benefit of using an external webcam is that you can be more flexible with how you place it. It's also easier to get a webcam to the proper height, which is at eye level. It's also great that you can adjust the position of the webcam during the meeting if there's a need to do so. And you can do this independently of the laptop camera. A final benefit of an external webcam is that you will usually get the higher video quality than your laptop webcam. One limitation that you should be aware of is the length of the webcam cable. You can see here in the Poly Studio P5 that the cable is kind of stretched to its maximum length in this configuration. You can, of course, get a longer extension cable for your webcam if this is a problem. The next camera solution is to use your smartphone as a webcam. And this will give you great flexibility because you can place it in the room completely independent of your other equipment. In my typical setup, I use the phone as a second or even a third camera. So the primary camera is usually pointed at the speaker and one or two of the secondary cameras are pointed at the rest of the audience. But of course, you can also use a phone as a primary camera. If you do, make sure to route the audio through the phone as well. For example, if you're using a Bluetooth conference speakerphone, make sure that that speakerphone is connected to your smartphone so that Zoom or whatever video conferencing software you use can match the primary camera video with the audio from the room. If you use the phone as a secondary camera, do make sure to disconnect the audio from the phone. If you don't disconnect the audio, you will get audio feedback in the room and in the meeting and it will sound terrible. I made a dedicated video specifically about how to eliminate audio feedback in hybrid meetings. Check it out in the video description. When you're using a smartphone as a camera in a hybrid meeting, you can always choose between the back camera, the main camera, or the selfie camera, the front facing camera on the phone. Just keep in mind that usually the quality of the back facing camera is higher than the selfie camera. The next solution is going to be the highest quality solution, and that is to use a real camera for your hybrid meetings. This could be a mirrorless camera like the Canon M50 that I'm using. It could be a DSLR. It could be a point and shoot compact camera. It could be a camcorder. It could be a cinema camera or a GoPro. Let's take the Canon M50 as an example. There are two ways that I can connect it to my laptop so that it shows up as a webcam. The solution I typically use is to connect the Canon M50 with the USB cable into my laptop. And then I use the Canon EOS webcam utility and it will just show up there as a webcam, no further equipment required. The other solution would be to use an HDMI cable. Now this will require an HDMI input on your computer. And the best way to achieve this is to use a capture card such as the Elgato Cam Link. For this to work, you need a clean HDMI signal and not every camera has that. An HDMI signal that is not clean will show all kinds of indicators on screen, the same ones that you would find on the camera screen, such as the focus box, for example. If we continue with the Canon M50, the Mark I does not have a clean HDMI signal, whereas the Mark II does have a clean HDMI signal. Regardless of what connection type you use, there is one thing that you will need in all cases, and that is a continuous power supply. 
For my Canon camera, I use a dummy battery and an AC adapter kit. With all these real camera solutions, you will also need proper stabilization like a tripod, but that will make this solution extremely flexible. One benefit that you will have compared to almost every other solution we've talked about so far is that if you have a zoom lens on your camera, you can also easily zoom in on the speaker in the room. The next camera solution is to use a dedicated video conferencing system in the room, like this Poly Studio, for example. This box here has a camera in the middle, it has really good speakers, plus it has six microphones, and it uses those microphones to track the speaker, and then it will zoom in automatically on whoever is speaking in the room. In this sample, I am sitting approximately one and a half meters away from the Poly Studio. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Microphone check, one, two. Now I'm going to stand up and walk to the other end of the room where we have our stage. And we're going to see how quickly the Poly Studio is able to focus in on me now that I'm standing on stage. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. Microphone check, one, two. This is at approximately five meters distance from the device. I'm going to grab a seat right here to my left and we're going to see once again how well the Poly Studio is able to pan over and focus on me as I'm sitting down at approximately five meters distance from the device. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. For the final test, I'm going to walk over and grab a seat a little bit closer to the device, approximately one and a half meters again. And I see that it focuses on me as I was standing up. And now that I'm sitting down, let's see how long it takes for the Poly Studio to reframe me now that I'm sitting down at the table. And there we go. This is a microphone check. One, two, one, two. So this is an all-in-one solution that you place at one end of the room. An alternative approach would be to use the Meeting Owl Pro, which is a 360 degree camera that you place in the middle of the room. Now these all-in-one solutions are going to be more expensive than all of the other options that we looked at so far. The Poly Studio is typically around $750 and the Meeting Owl Pro starts at around $1,000. There are links to them and all the other gear we've been talking about in the video description below. And there you can also pick up my free hybrid meeting checklist where I have lots more tips on how to set up the perfect hybrid meeting. Another incredibly important aspect of a great hybrid meeting is audio. Click or tap the screen right here to watch my full video on how to set up excellent audio in your hybrid meetings from budget to professional solutions. My name is Marcus Seppala. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.